Snot Stew, Chapter 10. The next morning, I'd almost forgotten about Snot Stew. Mother let us outside early. Toby played chase with Butch a few times. I rolled in the dirt and lay in the sun. After a little while, Mother opened the door. Here, kitty, 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 she called in a real high voice. You two ready to eat? We only had dry cat food, but being outside always made me hungry. I started to eat. All of a sudden, Toby bopped me over the ears with his paw. Mine, he meowed. I frowned at him. No, it's not. This is my bowl. Toby made a mean face. It is not. I glared back at him. It is too. He arched his back. Is not. Is too. Is not. Is too. It's not. Stew. Then he jumped at me. He grabbed me around the ears with his front paws and pretended to kick me in the stomach with his back ones. We rolled and tumbled on the floor, playfully biting and chewing at each other. We're playing snot stew, Toby growled, and we laughed and laughed. After we finished eating, I curled up under the couch to give myself a cat bath. Maybe snot stew isn't such a bad game after all, I thought. Toby and I haven't wrestled and played so much since we were kittens. Maybe snot stew is a good thing, but too much of even a good thing can cause problems. It seemed like Toby wanted to play snot stew all the time. It seemed like the more we played, the rougher Toby got. One day when we were eating, he even hit me with his claws instead of just boxing me with his paw. That hurt. I don't want to play snot stew anymore, I complained, licking where Toby scratched me. Let's quit. Toby just walked over to my bowl and shoved me out of the way. If you don't want to play, fine. I'll just eat you your food too. Then it will be mine. I sat there, smoothing my fur with my tongue. Toby gobbled my food up, then went back to his own bowl. The same thing happened the next day and the next. After a week, I could almost feel my ribs sticking out. I hated snot stew. It was the dumbest, stingiest, most selfish game I'd ever played. It was no fun at all. After a second week of snot stew, my brother Toby was a different cat. He was grouchy all the time. He was lazy too. He didn't want to play or even climb trees. All he wanted to do was lie around and sleep. I think he really liked bossing me and taking my food. It wasn't a game for him. Not anymore. Snot stew was real. Toby wanted everything of mine. He wanted to play with my Sarah after she got home from school. He wanted to eat my food. He even tried to take over my safe place under the couch. Only Toby had gotten a lot bigger and fatter from eating both my food and his. He had trouble squeezing under my couch. At least I still have my safe place, I thought. Around lunchtime, I noticed a wonderful smell coming from the kitchen. I was hungry and the smell kept drifting to my nose and making little drops of water form at the corners of my mouth. I could hear the tink sound when mother put the dishes on the table. Daddy came in and when they finished eating, mother opened the door. Rambo, tick tack, she called. Those were our people names, so we didn't act like we, we heard her. Come on you two, she coaxed. If you really, if you're ready to eat, I've got some stew. My eyes rolled in my head. My tongue lapped across my lips. Oh, I love stew, I swooned, jumping up to trot to the kitchen. But Toby got there first. He was eating out of my bowl. He was eating my stew. Can I eat my stew? I asked politely. Toby just sneered at me and flipped his tail. It's not yours, it's mine. I shoved him back. It is not, he shoved back, is too. I'll show you, I thought, I'll just eat your stew. But when I got to Toby's bowl, he waddled over and shoved me aside. This is mine too, he growled. Is not, I growled back, is too. I felt my teeth grind together. I was not going to place not stew. I had had it. Before I knew what happened, I flew into him with everything I had. I jumped on his back and hung on with my claws. I hissed, meowed, growled, bit his ear, chewed the back of his neck. Toby didn't know what had hit him at first, but he fought back. He was much bigger and heavier than me. Suddenly, he flung me off. Then he pounced on me. 
Clawing and biting and hissing and spitting, we rolled across the floor. We bumped into mother's leg. She was jumping from one foot to the other, screaming at us to stop. We didn't. I had had as much of Toby as I could take. He wasn't going to eat my stew. I bit him again. All of a sudden, something cold and very wet hit me. I was just about to chomp down on Toby's paw. Instead, I shivered with the cold, wet feel. I jumped up to shake myself off. Mother stood glaring down at us. She had an empty water glass in her hand. Before either of us had time to dry ourselves with our paws or tongue, she snatched us up by the backs of our necks. I'll not have that fighting in my house, her voice boomed. If you two are going to fight, you can do it outside. And with that, she flung us out the back door. I was dripping wet. My tail was even wet. I guess that's what threw my balance off. I managed to land on my feet, but instead of staying on them, I fell over and went rolling. Now, the water mother had poured on us was mud. Toby managed to stay on his feet, but his tummy was so round and full of my stew that it bounced against the ground. I heard him make kind of a whoosh sound. It knocked the air out of, his, out of him. He stood there a minute, trying to catch his breath. I was so mad at Toby. I didn't even want to talk to him. I marched over and sat under the tree. I started licking my paws, then rubbing my fur to try to get the nasty, yucky mud off me. Once Toby caught his breath, he acted like he, could, he couldn't care less. We'd been thrown out of the house. He flipped his tail, real smart Alec-like, and headed for the picnic table. Haven't given old Butch a run for uh, quite a while, he said, wiggling his ears. Think we'll play chase. The dirt that was now mud stuck to my paws. I got some of it out in my mouth. I used my tongue, trying to get the gritty feel out from beneath my teeth. From beneath my teeth. Hope he gets you, I spit. Toby ignored me. He jumped up on the picnic table, then to the fence rail. Like always, he pranced down the rail to his usual spot. He looked around until he found Butch. Hey, fatty, he meowed. Bet you can't catch me. Fatty, fatty, two by four. Then he jumped down. I heard Butch bark. Outside the fence, I could hear him chasing Toby. I could hear him growling and roaring. I could hear his teeth snapping together. I yawned. Then, just as usual, Toby appeared at the hole in the fence. Just as usual, his head came through the hole. And just as usual, his front paws came through. Then, not as usual, Toby stopped. I quit licking my fur and sat up. Suddenly, his eyes got as big around as saucers. He lunged, jerked, nothing happened. Toby didn't move. Outside the fence, I could hear a butch roar. He was getting closer. I'm stuck, Toby meowed. Help me, I'm stuck in the hole. Butch's bark was a roar. Toby's eyes flashed open even wider than before. His ears shot straight up. He jerked one more time, but it was no use. Ouch! Toby screamed. Meow! That hurts. His eyes were filled with panic. He clawed the ground. He's got me! Butch is eating me! Toby's cry was the most frantic, most terrible sound I've ever heard in my life. 